Hi, seventh grade. I wanted to come on here really quick and um, do a little video about how to revise your essay, your bio, and um, and then how to do your final draft. It should be pretty easy. Um, the, this information could be very helpful for you for this revision and also revisions in the future. So my advice to you is to write this stuff into your notebook. Um, it says revisions, remember the six traits and SOAP. And I think I talked a little bit about SOAP in another video, but I'm not sure I've talked about the six traits. So I'm going to go over this in the context of revising your bio. So you should have your rough draft in front of you and you should be ready with a pen or pencil to make changes on that rough draft. I mean, you cross things out, circle, draw arrows, write things between the lines that you skipped, hopefully. Um, and so these are the kinds of changes that I would like you to consider making in your bios. First of all, the first trait is ideas. Ideas, that trait means that you have the right ideas, you have enough of them and not too many. Um, did you follow the directions? That's the biggest thing. Really in my class, if you want to survive and make decent grades in my class, the main and most important thing is to follow directions. If you follow directions, you will at least pass. Even if you're not that great of a student, even if you're not that great of an English speaker, if you follow the directions, you will probably at least pass. Okay, so did you follow directions? Length, if I gave you a length, which this time I did, I told you it needed to be, I believe, 10 to 12 sentences and it should include the right details. Um, in this case, you are to include your name and you are to include some interesting facts about yourself. Something that might be interesting to me. I'm your audience. And when you're judging the ideas portion of your paper, you need to have the audience in mind. Who are you writing to? In this case, you're writing to me and you might also be imagining um, an occasion for which you might need a bio. And we talked about that, yes, in another video. Um, organization is the second trait of good writing. Ideas, organization. Organization has to do with what order you put things in and how you group things. And so in this case, it's a short assignment. You probably don't need to have more than one paragraph. Just need to make sure things are in logical order. Chronological order, perhaps, you could go from something interesting from when you were a really small child and end up with something interesting from when you, uh, when you came to be the age that you are now. Um, cause and effect, if you have something that caused something else in your bio, then you should put those things close together and make it clear that they are related. Um, Voice. Voice is a little bit hard to explain sometimes. It's kind of how you come across. You use a different kind of voice to talk to your parents than you do to talk to your friends, than you do to talk to your teachers, than you do to talk to the mayor. So um, just remember that I'm your primary audience this time and um, also whoever you imagine that your audience might be for whatever occasion you had in your head. Um, remember your subject, that's easy, that's you. Your occasion, your audience, and your purpose. What are you trying to do with your bio? A bio is really to introduce you to someone who does not know you. And so that should be things that you want people to know about you for this occasion. Uh, word choice means that you choose the right words, obviously. Um, and for your purposes, it means that you choose the correct English word for something. Um, and let's see, for example, the word comprehensive in English does not mean the same thing as the word sympathetic or understanding. So you need to understand and grow in your understanding of English words. The words in and on and at can all be translated ang in Spanish, but they mean different shades of things. And so are you choosing the correct words? 
are you choosing specific words? So for example, I put the thing in the place, that's not specific words. But I put the socks in the drawer, now I know what you're talking about because you're being specific. And maybe I'm angry and so I threw the socks in the drawer and so now I have a specific verb as well as specific nouns. And then I could say, I threw the blue socks into the drawer. Now I've given a specific adjective. So those are word choices. Sentence fluency, you should not have run-on sentences. I know you learned a little bit about run-on sentences from your previous grammar teacher. Uh, we will be working um, against those <laughs> um, in this class. And you should vary your sentence length and type. So you shouldn't have all short sentences or you will sound like a robot. And you shouldn't have all long sentences or you will sound like a textbook. And neither one of those is the kind of writing that you want to produce in class. Not robot writing and not textbook writing. Um, conventions includes grammar, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, those are the things that ordinarily students will correct when I tell them to revise and correct their papers. But um, that's not obviously not the only thing. This is just a small part of all of this is what, how I'm grading your paper. So if you write a very well-constructed paper of two pages, uh, more than 12 sentences, correct in all of your grammar, spelling, and punctuation, but it's not a bio about yourself, then the ideas is not gonna be good. And the voice is not gonna be good. So keep all those things in mind. Finally, underline and italicize. Underline if you're writing by hand. Italicize if you're typing. Words that are not in English. So uh, that includes Spanish words actually. Um, because it's just to indicate that it's a foreign word. We'll talk about that at some point during the year, italicizing and underlining things. Um, so once you have made corrections on this, your rough draft should look rough. It should have scratch outs and words added and maybe an arrow drawn somewhere because one sentence belongs down here and another sentence belongs up here. So those kinds of things you can do on your rough draft. So I want you to take a picture of that and that's part of what I want you to turn in for your assignment. The other part is your final draft. Your final draft does not need to be double spaced if you're typing, it does not need to have skipped lines if you're writing by hand, you can write on every line. Um, please just make sure to put periods at the end of your sentences so that I know where one sentence stops and the next sentence begins. That would be great, please, thank you and make it neat and you can either take a picture of it if especially if it's in your notebook take a picture of it and turn it in or you can just send me the word document um, on google classroom if you need help turning things in please please do not hesitate to contact me you can write a comment on the assignment i can't figure out how to turn this in i've already had somebody do that in one class so um, remember all of these things and you should do fine on revising and publishing your bio. Happy writing!